Good morning. Uh, my name is Kyle Kirby. I'm uh, a co-founder with my brother Craig and the curator here at the Hickory Aviation Museum. And it's May 14th, about uh, 10 after 8 in the morning, and this is a huge, huge day uh, for our museum. I am a Caldwell County guy. The museum's in Hickory. I love Caldwell County. I'm from Hudson and uh, proud to be from Hudson. Uh, my dad taught uh, there, coached uh, Skip Downs and some of the stalwarts of the Hudson community. So we're intertwined in the DNA of, of, uh, of Caldwell County and, and it's really a, a privilege to do what we do here. We, we kind of built the museum here because of necessity. Uh, we looked at Morganton, Lenore, but we did an air show for 11 years and uh, you know, it's, it's more accommodating Hickory it was. So but we're right next door so just across the river from the county so but this is Caldwell County true and blue uh, Bill's been kind enough to come out today to uh, videotape uh, Craig and I started the museum we found uh, an airplane a lot of you will remember the uh, Fury the the airplane that sat at the Hudson Optimus Park uh, when I was growing up got to be stung in it uh, you know it was pretty I was there as a child when it came in and it was uh, it was just so impressive as a kid to see this airplane even though it was a hunk of junk uh, you know, and it, it maybe helped inspire me. I don't know. I've always loved this stuff. Uh, all of us that are involved here. And when I say, you know, it's not about me, it's not about my brother. We have a whole cast of great people here at the museum. And today's the culmination. Uh, the airplanes you see behind me, this is the F-4 Phantom. It's my favorite airplane uh, growing up. Uh, we've gotten all these airplanes by truck. We had to go, this particular aircraft came from Dahlgren, Virginia. We had to get a 60-foot double drop extendable low boy. You, that's hard to find to get this thing trucked in. We had to get cranes to take these airplanes apart. Today, today, excuse me, today we're getting an airplane and I got I just got to say it's $60 million worth of electronic warfare. Just mass. She's kind of a pig. She ain't the prettiest thing in the world. But man, it's getting flown in today. And we've got people, that, it's an EA-6B Prowler. Um, they're retiring it. The Navy retired it. It's flown for 45 years. Now, Bill and I discussed a little bit about Vietnam and his days at Guam with the B-52s. That's when the EA-6B started its mission in 1971. And from then till now, up to this very date, here comes the guys. We've got some crews coming in. You'll hear some noise. Some of our guys coming in to uh, prepare. And, uh, you know, we were talking about the A6B, and before I get started, we had a lull there. We got some action behind us, some activity. The airport's starting to bustle. And uh, Bill Tate, who was so kind to come out here, is with the Caldwell uh, Heritage Museum up in Caldwell County, up on uh, Biden Street, Baden Street. Uh, and go up there. They, it's a tremendous place. And he also does uh, Caldwell County now and then. He's got some great videos on YouTube of things in the county of interest. There's a lot of history. Uh, I'm a FedEx guy, I do Edgemont, road, you know, up that area, and I see some of these old things that he, they've covered. Matter of fact, found a uh, Civil War grave up there off Globe Road uh, not too long ago. I'll stop every now and then and kind of check things out. But we're from a rich uh, tradition. We come from a rich place here in, in, in Caldwell County, and I wanted to give Bill a, a plug and thank him. And we want to, you know, work with their museum up there collectively and you know who knows what we can tackle so be aware that we're here at Hickory at the Hickory Airport and those guys are up in Cobble County right downtown on, on Vaden Street Biden Street so uh, want to give him a plug so back to the Prowler um, the aircraft coming in today uh, is very significant in a lot of ways the guys don't get a lot of headlines it's uh, it's a what they call a force multiplier the aircraft is uh, low density meaning there's not a lot of them they didn't make a bunch but it's, and it's a high demand aircraft, so uh, what they do, they go in, they jam radar, and the airplane we're getting today, and I'm really happy to say that being an airplane, kind of an airplane freak, it's an ICAP-3 aircraft. There's only two of them on display in the country. They went through, uh, when they came out in 71, they were upgraded as the threats increased and different things came about. So they made, uh, there was another program, I can't think of the name of it exactly right now. It's, uh, but anyway, they made an ICAP-2 bird, improved combat capability and then the ICAP-3 and these guys in Afghanistan and Iraq for instance they could literally pick up a threat and jam the radar so the other aircraft in the strike uh, strike packages that kind of thing could be you know not affected by the missiles 
and the radar directed artillery it shuts the the uh, enemy radar down so our guys come home safely to their families but they could also pick up new threats the computer capability the processing capability is much faster they could literally if you had an ISIS guy in a ditch trying to blow up a Humvee they could literally jam the cell phone I mean it's truly the airplane still classified even though it's at the twilight of its career they will continue to fly with the Marines with VMA Q2 3 and 4 until 2019 but the Navy have replaced the aircraft with the uh, F-A-18 Growler which is the uh, replacement thereof of the Prowler in the Navy they're, they're already gone so VMA QT-1 is the squadron that's donating the airplane today. It's painted up specifically to come here, which means a lot to us because that's how much it means to the Marine Corps to be leaving this airplane. And, you know, the aircraft served for 30 years in North Carolina uh, at Cherry Point Marine Corps Air Station. And even before that, the predecessor to this aircraft, the EA-6A and the EF-10B uh, Sky Knight, both served in the, so I'm not even sure how many years, probably up 45, 50 years. Uh, of service in North Carolina so that's what today is for us we're getting the first airplane flown in which is significant that's a bucket list thing and we're hoping it opens the doors and the floodgates for other opportunities maybe a hangar here which we want to get these airplanes inside as you see the F-40s paint I'll be the first to tell you we work we all work for a living and uh, so we put our time in here to volunteer and that's one of the beauties. I, I like to say this place is like Disneyland and would like to encourage you to come out and see us because you never know who's coming out. We've had guys that flew the A-4, which we'll talk about in a second, Bill. Uh, this aircraft behind me was in the Cuban Missile Crisis uh, in 1962. I was just brand new born. My mom and dad said they sat up one night all night just waiting for the missiles to hit. So uh, this airplane was on the deck of the USS Enterprise at that time, you know, part of the blockade of Cuba. So. I don't know of any other phantoms in the world that, that are on display that were involved in the Cuban Missile Crisis. And this is about the 100th airplane made out of uh, 5,200 examples. So it's very early, so we're privileged to have it. So I guess that's a good lead in to what we're expecting today, today Bill. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Caldwell County and everybody else watching, uh, here we have behind us the uh, F-14 Tomcat. Uh, this specifically is a Delta model, a D, the last uh, version made. Uh, the F-14, we just spoke a little bit about the F-4, was designed to replace the Phantom. Uh, in Vietnam, the Phantom, you know, I thought it did great. It did. They had some issues uh, with training and that type of thing. The pilots really, we lost the art of dogfighting with the F-4, and it was large. And, you know, uh, an F-4's internal fuel load weighed more than the, than the MiG-17 did fully loaded. So. And, and over there we had to visual identify targets so the Phantom would get in a phone booth with the MiG-17 and you know you don't want to turn in a phone booth with the little MiG-17 fighter and the, and the F-4 didn't have a gun until the F-4E came out so you couldn't throw rocks at it so we ran into some troubles in Vietnam so Top Gun actually was started with the F-4 program the F-8 Crusader but most of you know this airplane from the movie Top Gun and that's kind of what happened the uh, the F-14 you'll see here these are rails for the Phoenix missile uh, the Navy decided uh, the, the Soviets were coming up with new threats. They had a whole range of new anti-ship missiles. And so the F-4, we'll let this airplane talk a little bit and let him go by. So the Phantom's technology in its era could track one target, you know, and shoot at one target. This aircraft uh, integrated a whole lot of new technologies. And the Navy wanted it to be able to shoot down not only aircraft, but the air-to-surface missiles, the anti-ship missiles. So this aircraft was born with six Phoenixes, which literally came from the YF-12 program, the Blackbird. So uh, really, really interesting story there. And this aircraft uh, is one of the first swept wing airplanes of the wing sweep back, uh, the F-111 being the first. And uh, the, the Navy wanted the F-111B for, for their service, and the Air Force got the F-111A. Didn't work out. The F-111B is slightly large. So Grumman, in their brilliance, which the airplane coming today is another Grumman product. They call them the Ironworks. You go back to World War II and you look at the Wildcat, the Hellcat, the Tiger Cat, the Bearcat. So there's a legacy with these airplanes in naval service. So really cool to have this aircraft here and be representing all of those. But the F-14 came out, it had a, what was called the AUG-9 radar in the uh, F-14A, which could track 24 targets and shoot, you know, at I think 10 or 12 of them at the same time, which was totally a new world. 
uh, of capability for, for the Navy and the, the Blue Water Navy as, as it was then to uh, protect our fleet from any uh, Soviet threats. So uh, the airplane uh, served tremendously. Uh, they just retired it in 2006. And this airplane, this particular airplane, 163902, flew the very last official flight in the Navy at the Tomcat sunset ceremony when it was retired. And it's uh, marked in, uh, if you get the tail, the Felix logo on the tail, there's Felix the Cat up there, it's VF-31. When Butch O'Hare won the Medal of Honor in World War II, he was actually flying a Wildcat with that emblem on the side of his airplane. The squadron has survived since the teens. So uh, this airplane like stands on some shoulders of those before it, the squadron. And it's just thrilled, it's a thrill to have it here because you know it's, it's well known. It, this was the face of the Navy for years and the movie, obviously the movie Top Gun. But the D came out, they wound up in Desert Storm and um, the F-14 was strictly made for air to air. It never carried bombs. So they found they didn't really have a mission. The Air Force kind of was in charge of the operation, so the F-15s and those guys got the prime MiG hunting territory to shoot down airplanes, and the F-14 guys really didn't get that many opportunities. So uh, they eventually, you'll see, they, they hung bomb racks and gave the F-14 more of a, a, a strike punch where it could go in and drop bombs. There were F-14s that carried a TARPS pod, a tactical aerial reconnaissance potted system that did go in country and they did manage to shoot down two helicopters, two MIH during uh, Desert Storm. But then um, the riding was on the wall. The airplane's very expensive, uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of maintenance uh, per flight hour, man hour per flight hour. So they started looking at retiring it with the Super Hornet when it came online, the F-18, the, the newer model. So. Um, Tremendous airplane, though. We're, we're very honored to have it here. Matter of fact, at our opening ceremony, the back seater on the last flight, Mike Moots Patronus came here and helped us do our grand opening. And we've got some really good inside stories, which I really can't share with you on this airplane and kind of how it did the last flight and VF-31 got the mission. So uh, just a tremendous airplane, still viable today. In my opinion, it could still go up and, and, and do its business very effectively. But, uh, but she's gone, and so come to Hickory and you can check out the F-14D Tomcat. All right, um, I feel guilty. My compatriots are over here working, and I'm being a camera hound, but hey, we're in another airplane. And uh, as far as our aircraft go here at, at the Hickory Aviation Museum, this perhaps is the most awesome for us as to some of the things that have happened with uh, the airplane, the people we've met that flew it, uh, this is a Vault or Ling Timco LTV Vault A7A Corsair. Uh, the aircraft, uh, this particular aer uh, airplane replaced the A4 Skyhawk in Navy service. And this bird right here did three combat tours in Vietnam. In 1968 on, on America, USS America with VA-82, and that's how she's painted right now. It was Air Wing 6, there's six stars on the rudder, all the aircraft and all of them, and the, the Fitrons, the Actrons. They all had six stars to denote the, uh, the wing. First, uh, well, actually the second and third crews for the A-7. It was brand new then. Brought to the fleet all kinds of new capabilities, blind bombing you know, at night, bad weather. It had uh, a good radar uh, to, to, uh, to do that, avionics to do that. But I really want to get to the chase. This is not about the airplanes, it's about the people. And we actually had the privilege and honor we had a guy come in uh, one day that flew the aircraft from Miami, Florida, a guy named Joel Eaton, a dear friend of ours. He's a lawyer in Miami, and uh, my brother was working line crew back then, and he called me, and, and uh, Joel had flown in, and they wanted, he said he wanted to look at the A-7. So they went out and looked at it, and Craig opened up the canopy for him. He sat in, and he's closed his eyes. Yeah, I, da, 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 I know this. Yeah, I can do this. I think I can still fly it. So he goes back home. He's got a house in the mountains up here because our area is so beautiful. So anyway, um, Joel goes back to Miami. He said, I'm gonna check my log books. Say, I think I flew the airplane. Call back, I've got 19 combat missions. So not long thereafter, there was um, a guy named uh, Kenny Wayne Fields that actually wrote a book called The Rescue of Streetcar 304. He was shot down on May 31st, 68, uh, at 10.07. And uh, he, um, not at 10.07, I'm thinking another story. I'll, I'll get back to that. But, and I gotta be quick, man, because we don't have much time we have. But anyway, uh, I could go for days on this airplane. So the next guy, uh, Kenny Wayne Fields, checked his logbooks after we, they brought him out here to photograph him in front of the aircraft for the Charlotte Observer. They were doing a story on the book. So 
he comes out, he checks his logbooks, and not only did he know Joel Eaton, but Kenny was the first guy to land this airplane on the carrier deck when they did carrier qualifications back in, uh, on Lexington. So anyway, we had two guys that flew the airplane, same squadron, 68, 69, 70, which it flew with off Coral Sea. And uh, one thing led to another, and in 2010, we had the incredible privilege of hosting this squadron's reunion here at, at, at Ham in Hickory. And um, our keynote speaker was a four-star admiral named Sir Leighton Snuffy Smith. He uh, dropped the Tanhua Bridge in 1972 and also was over Bosnia, was knighted by Queen Elizabeth. So, and four of the guys that flew this airplane earlier in 68, in 69 and 70, four of the guys went on to command aircraft carriers and they were all here. And I've, you know, I've still pinched myself at the, that event that happened. And then the aircraft went on in 1972 to fly a linebacker, uh, which if you don't know what that is, hey, that's what this is about, learning. Look it up, man. We, we really didn't lose the Vietnam War, in my opinion, and in these guys' opinion. We, we never lost a battle. So uh, anyway, the VA-37 Bulls flew the aircraft and it was upgraded to carry smart weapons, which we had in, in 72. So a uh, lot of interesting people involved with this airplane. They did lose a guy on the 68 cruise, a guy named Scotty Greiling. And uh, he was flying with a good friend of ours named Walt Moser. And right before they left on their cruise, they were based at Cecil Field in Florida. And this guy had a little baby girl. And I gotta tell you this story, and Bill, I may get emotional on this. They held the little girl in the hospital and smoked the cigars and that kind of thing. So. Um, when they go on the cruise, this was July 24th, 1968. Scotty was lost en route pack to the panhandle of uh, North Vietnam, low threat area. And when it happened, they came back from the cruise just in time for Christmas in 68 and, and to watch Apollo 8, which is another thing near and dear to my heart. And we've, Walt and I have discussed that many times and what it meant to him. But the, the mother and the baby of Scotty Growling, the guy that was lost, were gone. They left. And 68 was a bad year. A lot of different things happened. So anyway, just prior to the reunion in 2010, we found this guy's daughter, who was like 40 some years old now. And she came, his younger brother came from Washington State, sister from uh, Indianapolis and two cousins from Gainesville, Florida. And it was just the most amazing thing to have this daughter of this guy that gave his life for years and my freedom here. and. I can't, I can't explain, you know, these are inanimate objects, but when you start the human story uh, with, with, the, with this side of the thing and the, and the sacrifice these people have made, again, for you and I, then it just it staggers the imagination to even be associated with them and, and be able to do something to them to kind of say thanks. But this little A7, it's got some nicknames I really can't share it with you, but what, what a what a what a gem it's been. We're doing some other things with other museums with the A7, so it's a you know it's a it's a community effort, that kind of thing. So we're just very very honored to have it. Okay, behind us now we have our T33 uh, shooting star T-Bird. Basically, the uh, Air Force. This is the first production jet fighter the the uh, America ever had the P80. So if you take this cockpit back here. Take it away, put a little bubble canopy, similar to a P-51 or that kind of thing. You've got the P-80, which is America's first uh, fighter jet production-wise. Airplane served in Korea, not this particular model. So uh, what, what we did is, as a nation, uh, it, the airplane was very forgiving to fly. So the, the Air Force needed a trainer. We had a bunch of new jets coming out. So because of its docile uh, capabilities, the uh, Lockheed, which built the SR-71, the F-104, Kelly Johnson and company, it's an amazing story put a second seat or a two hole in there and this airplane became a trainer within the United States Air Force. The Navy adopted it as a trainer as well and I don't know how many countries flew it. It probably still flying somewhere, not sure, but what an airplane. So really good to have one because, you know, probably four or five generations of pilots cut their teeth on this aircraft. So we got this one from Russellville, Kentucky from a VFW and it's always fun taking the road trips to go get them. It's a lot of work. I have some skip knuckles after it's over with, but hey, they're here. They're here at Hickory to look at, so good to go. Okay, this uh, here, the little shark mouth bird, is a uh, Beechcraft T-34. We talked about the T-33, a trainer. That's exactly what this aircraft is. Basically, um, the uh, Navy, the Air Force needed a uh, kind of a lead-in trainer. The, the Beechcraft Bonanza was a great airplane, high performance. So basically, um, 
they built the T-34 Alpha, recip engines, uh, the T-34 Bravo, which is a recip, and you know, airplanes go as they upgrade and that, you know, they change the uh, alphanumerics, the T-34A, B, C, it's the last version. You'll see there it's got a turbojet, no longer a recip engine. So that's basically a little jet, a jet engine that turns that prop. That's called a turbo prop. And our FedEx bird back there behind it, if you can pan over there, Bill, I won't talk about it. Although I work for the company, it also has turbo props. And like I say, that's a jet engine that turns the prop. And it's a lot more power and a lot more efficient than a reciprocal or a, like a, your car engine, you know, the pistons and the gas. And so they're more economical. Uh, it, what's really funny is whenever we get new airplanes in, and we're going to talk about another trainer in a second, all the guys that flew our hot jets, the, the, you know, the, the current fleet birds, always go back in their logbooks, I wonder if I got time in that airplane. So it's a lot of fun to, you know, to get on Facebook, and when you're there, make sure you check out Caldwell County uh, now and then with Bill. I'm going to plug him again because uh, he does great work and again I want to thank him today but these guys will jockey you know and, and on Facebook which is a great resource there you know they post well I'll check my logbooks I don't have any time on that airplane but I flew like three numbers off of it because they all have bureau numbers this is 160-638 and they all it's in their logbook so it's a lot of fun to interact with these guys and and um, see you know see their reactions because they they really appreciate what we're doing and it's just it's a lot of fun so okay behind us now we have uh, Kind of a, another, almost a trainer. Uh, it came from the T-38. This is a Northrop product. And if you know Northrop Grumman now, they make the B-2 stealth bomber. Uh, this airplane was pretty much built as a, a private venture by Northrop to uh, create a fighter for the uh, United States Air Force and, and, an, and an export aircraft to, to give to other countries. You know, it came out in the 50s, late 50s, early, very early 60s. And, um, you know, a lot of people couldn't afford, say, an F-4 or some of the more expensive aircraft. So Northrop put on a weight reduction program for the fighter airplane. The T-38 was our first supersonic trainer, and matter of fact, our only supersonic trainer to this day. So they put, they made a fighter out of it, put a put a radar up on the nose, and uh, this is an F-5E, which is a little bit long, later lineage. It's got the leading edge root extensions on the wing here, which actually help the fuselage with lift. And it's a very, very, very uh, agile airplane. So what we found in uh, Vietnam, when our Phantom guys and our F-8 guys were struggling in air-to-air -air combat, they found out this airplane simulated a MiG-21 really well. And the A-4, we'll talk about it in a little bit. So they started with Top Gun, the aggressor programs as they're called. And if you look, there's a Russian star on the tail of this airplane. And we didn't put it there. We had a Marine come out here one day pretty mad at us and we put a Russian star on it you know, Marine Corps airplane. We did and the Marines did. So these guys in the number, that's a Soviet style number on the nose, board 09. So what they would do, they would go up. Our guys would go, say, to the first place they had the first uh, dissimilar air combat, as it's called, was at Homestead Air Force Base. So these guys go down, actually it was T-38s at the time, and started training and getting in a fur ball with each other and it started opening up eyes and one of the things that our guys in the Phantom which smoked tremendously you could see it from miles and miles away was that the, if this airplane at two miles if it turned into you it disappeared they'd say hit the invisible switch and that was a really eye-opening thing for our guys that were going to combat in Vietnam because the MiG-21 was about the same size so really an important program and it really reshaped our entire doctrine in the military all across all services and made us what we are and that's why you know Desert Storm and everything after we've done really really well because our guys didn't lose that art they, they're polished up on it get a lot of hours and this airplane is a huge contributor to that and we're glad to have it it came from uh, served at Yuma and one of the cool things is one of the local JROTC programs came here one day and their boss if you will was Lieutenant uh, Colonel Buck Kurt Buck Rogers he commanded the squadron. So not only did he bring his kids out here, he said, I used to fly this airplane. And you know, in all honesty, he said it was kind of a lemon. <laughs> but you learned about the aircraft. He said there were other airplanes, or Swiss airplanes have a flat nose. He said they're a lot more better on, you know, authority to pitch and that kind of thing. But hey, it's here representing. So we're glad to have it. Okay, uh, this behind us here, uh, don't know what happened, man. We just got part of the airplane. We've never figured out what happened from there back. Just kidding. We've got a good friend here named Man or, uh, Randy Monroe that's, I can't put into words what this guy means to the museum and he's a real part of the weave that keeps us wove. 
I love old music. That's Ozark Mountain Daredevil line. Just had to throw that in there. This is an F-14. You saw the full bird back here. This is an F-14A cockpit. And it's, uh, it's all there. It's, it's fully stocked in the cockpit, all the instruments. The uh, canopy, that's the last known F-14 canopy that the, the guys could find. and It was never used. It took about three weeks to get the paper off of it. Anyway, to let you know, Caldwell County now and then, and all the schools here locally, I went to Hudson High School and then to South Caldwell. This is available. We'll bring it out to the school for the kids to look at. Um, the canopy opens and and they really seem to get a, a a lot of fun out of it we've got a couple other cockpits that are in the works uh one here and uh shh. so anyway we got camera hounds over here they're wanting to get in on the action but uh, it's available and it's uh, it's all there it's uh really a neat piece it hadn't been painted yet we need help man uh, we need volunteers we've got a lot of work to do uh, we're going to probably paint one side of the airplane, an East Coast uh, squadron, and then a West Coast on the other side to denote, you know, both both services. And uh, so, hey, come out and get some. Come out and help us. And if you want this airplane to come to your school, we'd love to have you. All right, uh, this is what started it all uh, for the Hickory Aviation Museum. This is like the airplane that was at Hudson, uh, Optimus Park. It's an FJ3M Fury built by North American of uh, P-51 fame, uh, F-86 fame, and basically that's kind of what this airplane is, is an F-86 Sabre, kinda, and everybody thinks it is, but it's not. We'll try to do this, I'm getting old. Yep, the airplane has folding wings. What happened was with the uh, Navy, they, they wound up in Korea, and uh, Jim Roseman, hey, I'll get you on here. And uh, he's one of our great volunteers, uh, Jim Roseman. He, I got you. We got you on camp. Clemson, man. Clemson grad. Uh, and uh, so the Navy got over there. They had the uh, F-2H Banshee, the uh, F-9F Panther Jet, the F-3D Sky Knight, but no swept wing airplanes. And the MiG-15 kind of showed up and spoiled the party. Uh, fortunately, the Air Force had the F-86, which they quickly rushed to theater. And the Navy didn't have anything yet. So... Basically what they did, they took an off-the-shelf program. They had some things in the works that were coming up, uh, the F-4D, the Ford, the Sky Ray, and some other fighters, the swept wing version of the F-9F, which we'll talk about. We have one here, a trainer. And uh, what they did was they made the FJ-1. That's where the uh, F-86 really came from, from a Navy program. Not a lot of people know that, which was basically a straight wing, P-51 wing with a jet. So the Air Force got a hold of it after we got some German captured technology, put swept wings on it. The rest is history. So uh, the Navy pulled the F-86, the E, and basically put the folding wings on it, put a hook so it could land on the ship, and they changed the armament from 650 calibers to 420 mic mics. So uh, they got it around the boat, same J-47 engine as the Sabre, but with the extra weight, the hook, and the folding wings, the airplane around the boat, if you have a bolter, you miss the wire, and you have to go around, it's a little sluggish, and that kind of raised some concerns, so that's where this airplane came from, the FJ-3. So basically what they did, they took the J-47 out, added a right J-65 Sapphire, which had about 7,500 pounds thrust, about 2,500 pounds more thrust than the F-86E, and this baby was born. Actually, knew two guys, we did an air show here for 11 years, had two guys that uh, flew the airplane that we've met, Doc Sinden, and in the day, in the mid-50s, this airplane was probably the hottest fighter, and uh, yeah, we've got a friend, come on over here, Jeff, while we're talking, let's we'll continue talking a little bit about the, uh, the Fury, and you know the rest is. Well, I got to tell you one story before I introduce Jeff. And uh, dude, what a day! Man, I'm gonna give this dude a hug. <laughs> We're family here, baby. So uh, we had a guy named Ted Getz that came up here from Havelock, where Cherry Point, where the airplane's coming today, the EA6B. He actually got his logbooks out. He came up here for our grand opening. Dude proposed to his wife out of getting out of this airplane. One four one three nine three. How cool is that? All right, without that, no, no, don't turn it off. We're going to introduce Jeff Wofford here. Jeff is our president and our director here. Uh, great guy. He's the chief pilot at ComScope. My brother is the vice president, Craig. We'll meet him hopefully in a little bit, who flies with, uh, with Jeff as well. And uh, big day. I just wanted to give you an introduction. What do you want to say? This is... Uh, well, it is. It's, well, thank you. Absolutely. Hey. It is a big day for us. This is something uh, we've been looking forward to for a long time. I mean, really, you know, since uh, we first got the organization started, we've always wanted a military airplane flown in. Bucket and, list. Yeah, this is definitely a bucket list item, and this is big for the museum. 
uh, we're extremely excited about. I think it was somewhat poetic that the airplane we're getting today is coming out of Cherry Point. Uh, as Kyle was explaining, this is the airplane that got us started. And so uh, very poignant that the Marine Corps is helping us take this museum to the next level. But yeah, we're very excited about this. Uh, it's a big deal. A lot of people went to bat for us. Uh, there's not very many of these airplanes being delivered anywhere else in the country. This is one of two for this year. And uh, not going to be many more of them sent to museum. So we're very, very fortunate to get this airplane. The other part about this is, is the, uh, the squadron's actually standing down uh, next week. And so this is the last flight for the Banshees. This is the last flight uh, for the guy that's flying the airplane. He's getting out of the Marine Corps in a few weeks and moving on to a career with the airlines. He's supposed to go uh, start with Delta Airlines. So there's a lot of big things going on today. So this is important for our museum. As the squadron sort of stands down, it's our chance to represent them going into the future. So this airplane is going to have a home with our museum. We're going to represent the memory of this squadron from now on. They've been gracious to give us some memorabilia that we're going to keep on display here at the uh, museum. But we're very excited. Thank you. You know, that's that's what we do. I mean, it's it's a uh, it's like I said, it's like Disney World in here. You never know who's coming through the doors. And I guarantee you, you know, Larry Huggins, our Brigadier General here, uh, told me that he's got calls from uh, several places in the country of guys involved with the EA6B program. So you know, they're excited, and and you never know. We're the benefactors or the benefiters. Exactly. Yeah, uh, you know, whatever my grammar teachers are going to be, but anyway, you won't believe the stories that'll come about. And when he says representing, that's what we're doing. And, and we, you know, we get to hear these great stories of, of people that really, they're my heroes. They always have been, oh, and yeah. you know, and, and yours as well. So Jeff's a Navy veteran too. So well, thank, thank you. you for your service. And uh, so with that, I guess we're close for this one segment. All right, we're back, and uh, we're starting to get some tag-alongs, man. This is exciting. Uh, these are two friends of ours uh, at the museum here, and, and uh, we're behind the uh, TF9J or F9F8T. Uh, the designation changed in 62, so made it a lot easier for us airplane freaks because it was a lot of letters and numbers prior to that change. So uh, this airplane, we talked a little bit about the swept wing airplanes coming out of the Navy. This is a growth of the F9F Panther. This one's called the Cougar, and we love Cougars here. So uh, I got two Mosers, man. All right, Vaughn. I work with him at FedEx, great friend, and Skip. And I want to introduce Skip because the airplane today, we talked about it's a very specific mission that these guys fly. And Skip was in a very specific mission in Vietnam with VMCJ-1 with the RF-4B Phantom. And I wanted to recognize you for that. Just could you give a shout out, man. We're, we're so honored to have you here. I appreciate it. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Bring you back some memories. Yeah, when's the last time you saw an A6 or an EA6B? That was probably in 71, I guess. There you go. And that's when the airplane entered service. And, and right here is kind of what I'm talking about. You know, meeting people and making friends and hearing their stories. Everybody's got a story, man. And all these guys are microcosms of the macrocosm, the big picture of what it is. And, uh, you know, Vaughn, I told you a little, about, a little bit about the uh, reunion we had with the A7. This dude was Sir Snuffy's plane captain on the Nimitz in 76, trombones for the big parade. So uh, you want to say anything, Vaughn? I mean, what, what's it like to see? It's just, it's, it's great to be here and see all the things that Kyle and, and this organization does for the veterans, remembers them, let them come out and, and just, you know, uh, relive some of the moments they've had with these planes. It, it's, it is a great, a great thing. And, uh, and today's going to be a very special day because like Kyle's probably said, most of these planes have been flown in or heloed in or whatever. This one's going to be flown in, which is a first, and that's uh, that's a big deal. And I'm yeah. looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, that's. And I forgot we we airlifted the the Fury, the one that. Come here, Harry. I'm going to introduce you to while we're doing this. This is Harry Flynn. Give a plug out to uh, what you do. This guy is amazing. You talk about doing stuff for veterans. And uh, he's another guy that comes out a, a big participant when he's not busy. And when he tells you what he's doing, you know, support him in his endeavor. And uh, I'll let you have the mic, my friend. Well, I just appreciate what you all do out here. And uh, in a way, they support veterans much like I do. I do it in a different way. I do it in an organization called the American Legion. American Legion is the largest service organization in America for veterans. We serve our veterans and the youth of America. And uh, Colin wants you to, uh, me to tell a little bit about how I'm involved. I've been working my way up in post commander for two years, district commander for two years, been a, a division commander, which had a, in charge of whole western North Carolina last year. And this year at the current time, 
I'm involved as the chairman of the Department of North Carolina for a program we have called Junior Shooting Sports Program. We work with our youth, 12 to 18 years old, teach them marksmanship, safety, and educate them about it, and also enjoyment of them in competition. But I, I, I support veterans back. I mean, what these guys do out here. And he is a veteran. And it, yeah. <laughs> you can tell that but I am a Vietnam veteran, served in Vietnam in 1967-68. And I was an aircraft. I was an aircraft mechanic. Oh, well, I worked on aircraft. Yeah. I worked on C-7As Caribou's. I was in the Air Force and uh, supported the Army and the Marines and all of them. And we all had a job to do. And I feel today, our organization, our theme is still serving America, and that's what I feel I'm doing right now. I'm not in the military, but I'm still serving America, and that's what we ought to be doing. I have a why. I do do it because I enjoy doing it, and I have a why for doing it. And my why is to help our veterans and to carry on the member of our ones, not the ones that once to serve for before us, serve my time, and these guys serving. These guys out here today, I already thanked a bunch of them for what they're doing. And it's nice to hear that I'm a B-52 mechanic. Okay. Yeah. So you Circle of love, baby. But we, I, we I, these guys, I just told myself, I just appreciate what you all doing, carrying on with what we did, because all they're doing is just continue to defend and fight for our freedom just like we did. And these guys, hey, they represent us. I mean, they, they're, I don't think Kyle's not a veteran, but what he does for veterans, it's, I thank you, buddy. Appreciate you. I do it for you, heart. man. I'm back at you, brother. Yeah. I'm glad to get you on here, and no you know, you, you don't hear that a lot these days. There's a lot of inspiration in this country, unfortunately, and I've found out the one fraternity that you can count on that continues to give are our veterans. Period. It's instilled in them. There's something bigger. Kids, listen to this. A, a, you know. Take note and listen to what these guys are saying. It's not a me, me, me world. What can I do to help others? And that's a big mission here. You know, what can we do to represent? And, and this ain't about me. I want to make that specific. There's a lot of people here, and most of them are working. I'm not. I'm having fun. I'm kind of playing. I'll hear about that later. But it, it really, it's a privilege. I mean, look, look at these guys, man. I mean, hats off to you in your living room, and Bill, you, you as well. So uh, that's, that's what it's all about, man. It's, it's all about love and, and friendship and you know, working together, you know, it's it, like we say, it's a circle of love and a lot of, a lot of good things going on. Uh, got another friend. Uh, first of all, it's a airplane, a T2 Buckeye, another North American product. And uh, John, step in here with me, man. Don't be bashful. This is the thing that I really love about what we do. This dude here, John Mussolino, I love him. Dude flew KC-135s which is a tanker, talk about another force multiplier. He was in B-52s at Guam, so he's familiar with the mission. Refueled lots of B-52s. Yeah, you want to say I've a little seen, bit of... I've <laughs> seen it in person from a B-52. <laughs> you want to say a little bit about flying a 135 uh, to the folks? You know, like Kyle said, I flew the KC-135 back in the days of SAC when we were doing a lot of refueling bombers, pulling alert, oh, yeah. waiting for the, in case the horn went off, and uh, go have some fun with that. But. Uh, Flew a lot of different missions. Flew, you know, in addition to bombers, we, we refueled fighters. Wow. I got to go to England for a TDY, and we refueled some uh, West German fighters and, and RF4s out over uh, over West Germany. It's still West Germany at the time. Yeah, I got so, some killer pictures too, a lot, man. A lot of a lot of interesting things. Got to got to see a lot of things. Got to meet a lot of great people and. Uh, you know, some folks that I still stay in touch with from, from pilot training and from my uh, KC-135 days. So it's, it's the kind of thing that's, that always stays with you. Right. And, you know, he's involved with uh, the Air Power Heritage Museum, uh, right? Uh, it's the American Air Power Museum up on Long Island. Uh, we're based, actually, in an old hangar that Republic Aviation built P-47s during World War II. And we have a lot of, actually, about a dozen flying warbirds and uh, just like Hickory it's given me a chance to meet a lot of great folks folks that you know from World War II veterans Korea Vietnam people that I never would have met otherwise who've done a lot of really great things and, and really they're the heroes of absolutely all of this absolutely and you know that's to, to, to add to that it's, it's true and you know to have you as a pal man guys a great photographer uh, you know, and, and to have a KC-135, he's got some incredible pictures, you know, dragging planes across the, the ocean. And uh, which, you know, you guys don't buy many drinks at the, at the bar, do you? Because, I mean, everybody appreciates what these guys do. So thanks. Thanks for spending a little time with us. Rachel, come here, sweetheart. You can stay with me if you want to. We talk about the T2. Um, 
The T2, you'll see the International Orange, the bands. It's a trainer, another trainer. And uh, they try to make these high conspicuous. So, you know, you got a nugget in the cockpit. So hence the, the uh, orange paint. Really a neat little airplane. It's got the same J85s that the, the uh, F5 has, non-afterburning. And the airplane's a great spinning airplane. So I think they're, they've all been retired. They were used at NATC, Pax River, Patuxent River, Maryland for spin test. And you'll see a lot of videos of this airplane, you know, coming down in flat spins. Really, really cool piece. And this is another one, too, that our, our veterans, our A7 guys and, you know, our, our F14 guys, you know, everybody that goes in the fleet flew this airplane uh, from your aces to, you know, wh whoever. So uh, it's such an important element to uh, the training command. It's since been replaced by the T-45 Goshawk, which is a licensed produced uh, British Hawk product. So uh, we just got this one not too long ago, thanks to Randy and some other folks that are working with us and helping us out. So really, really cool to have this aircraft here. We got the scooter here. Uh, and I hope Nancy gets Hal out here. We got a very special Marine here that's one of our flock, if you will, that's a regular. Um, this airplane, I don't even know where to start. And I guess you guys have kind of deciphered I'm long-winded anyway. Uh, Ed Heineman, Douglas Aircraft, <clears throat> decided we had an airplane called the A1 Sky Raider, which was a big prop, R3350 powered bird. It was huge, folding wings, all the stuff. And it was, uh, they shot down two MiGs in Vietnam, which is phenomenal. Look that up. We actually had one here, Airworthy, at one point in time, which my brother actually got married in. So uh, anyway, this airplane was designed to replace that Sky Raider, that big prop airplane, and it actually turned out smaller. As everything was growing bigger and bigger and bigger, this airplane comes out. And what, what, a, what a dream it is. Uh, you know, when the first model, the A4D-1, which Hal flew, which hopefully he'll be out here in a minute, they carried a nuke, it was a tactical nuclear bomber. Gave the Navy the big stick, you know, to uh, enforce diplomacy and move an air base off of, you know, a country if they were giving us problems. And this thing packed a mighty punch, and the guys loved it. It's diminutive in size, and I'm going to tell you something, it's a sports car. Kind of like the F, excuse me, the F5. So uh, the airplane's got, oh, we got our guy coming. It's got slats. These things just pop in and out. There's no actuator. So it's really highly maneuverable. Talked to a lot of guys that flew the F-14, the F-18, and other airplanes. They'd rather be in this airplane than anything in a phone booth, in a furball. And I, we got a special guy here, man. I just want to introduce one of my favorite people on the planet, Semper Fi, amigo. I may get tears in my eyes. I did. Give me a hug, man. <laughs> Love this man. I hope you don't mind being on camera. But if there's one Marine here today, buddy, that, that I want to give a shout out to, it's Hal Muth. And I met Nancy. You come out here too, honey. It's, she's on our board of directors. And I met this guy one day in a waiting room at a doctor's office and saw that hat. And we talked and he told me, he said, uh, you know, I'm a flying sergeant. And uh, good Lord, we went from there. And they've been regulars ever since. And I can't tell you what a privilege it is. And Hal, if you want to, you want to share a little bit about all the airplane. Hal flew this top aircraft, the A4D1. This is a A4L. And I, you, got the, you got the airwaves, buddy. I just started flying the Corsairs and stuff. <laughs> the Bentwing Corsairs. <laughs> everybody everybody uh, knows about what the Corsair is. But uh, that's what uh, I flew in operational, and that's what we flew in Korea, except I flew the AD in Korea, which was a fine airplane. I flew, I think I flew 13 planes and models. I flew a lot of airplanes. Uh, I, I never flew cor uh, train sports though. I tried, but uh, they caught me racing and they wouldn't let me fly it anymore. What's well, a fighter pilot, always a fighter pilot. Yeah, right. And you know, I, I want to tell you, there's a story you told me when you were and I'm just holding the mic like this. I think it's good. Uh, they, and then at Cherry Point, you told me of a guy, one of your friends, flying a Corsair one day, and he ran out of gas. Right? Can you can you share that story with us? It's it's beautiful. Yes, he did. He uh, he was over towards uh, Kinston, and he uh, flew out of. He ran out of gas, and he landed on the highway. And on his rollout, he passed a little minute market. 
and he taxi he, he let it coast right up to the pump and started up typical marine stuff to fill her out. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that not beautiful? Now also this guy I've never met a Banshee pilot. This squadron coming today is VMAQT-1, the Banshees. He flew the aircraft, the Banshee, the McDonnell F-2H uh, Banshee, and he flew the, the photo reconnaissance model, the F-2H-2P in Korea as well, and uh, got chased by MiGs one day. And I'm going to tell you something. He got the mission done. I'll let him elaborate a little bit on that. Well, uh, we had a, a uh, kind of like a top-secret type mission, and... Uh, they gave me a little piece of yellow paper to sign that said, in the event that I don't return, they're going to deny ever knowing me. So I figured this must be important. Well, I flew the thing, and uh, this uh, Air Force radar guy was on the radio, and he told me they've launched a flight of uh, MiGs up at the Yalu, and he kept track of it to say where they were, and uh, until finally I, I saw him, but I had to finish the mission, and so I just rolled it over and pushed that old banshee's nose down and out run them all. <laughs> We're glad you did, my friend. We're glad you did. And, you know, just to give you an idea, he's, he's, he's humble, man. Um, guy flew F-7, F Tiger Cats. Look that airplane up. It's uh, tremendous. And uh, you want to you say a little bit about, he got in a race one time with, there was an airplane called an F-3D Sky Knight. It was a night fighter, jet. And uh, he uh, ran into one one day up in the air while he's in a Tiger Cat. And the Tiger Cat was a 400-plus mile an hour prop bird. It was at the end of the propeller uh, uh, era. And, uh, you know, one of the higher performance airplanes we ever fielded. So Hal happened to approach a uh, F-3D Sky Knight one day, and I'll let him take on from there. Well, uh, he was uh, kind of intimidating me a little bit, so I pushed over, and uh, I stayed with him in the dive, no, no doubt about it, but it was right up to the mock of the F-7. But actually, when we pulled away, the... I couldn't stay with the jet, but I let that sorry sucker get away. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about, the stories. Uh, they're, they're just incredible, and these guys represent so much. And, you know, it's just an absolute privilege to even it, to even be involved uh, with, with this cast. And he's one, but one of our veterans. There'll be more out here today. And Hal, you know, also did a tour in Vietnam in H-34s. Uh, not only did he fly fixed wing, but he did rotary wing aircraft as well. The H-34 and 65, there's some great stories there. And also the H-53, the big uh, the big Sikorsky in 69 and 70. So anything else you want to share? Oh, no. That's... Nancy, you want to do a little talking? Are you sure? Well, I, she's awesome, man. They come out together. They're a team. And so, like I say, she's on our board. And uh, we think we're going places. Today's a huge day. It's kind of where we started uh, the initial thing with the F-4. I love this airplane. When I grew up, it was Sky King. The Thunderbirds were here in 1970 or 71 with this aircraft, the F-4E version. The solo pilot's name was Major Mike Kirby, which left a big dent on this, I guess, eight-year-old kid at the time. And uh, we're really honored. I, I spoke about this airplane serving in uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis. But this airplane really set the precedent for all that followed. I mean, it took, you know, the F-14, the 16, the 15, the 18, the Harrier, the F-111, the A-10. My gosh, I could go for days to replace this airplane. So I was just telling somebody a minute ago, it's got about 300 air-to-air -air victories. Our fighter doctrine was really written in the cockpits of this airplane because this is a Navy aircraft. When it came out, this airplane broke 15 world records and the Air Force is kind of doing this number. They've got six brand new Century Series fighters and the airplane really outperformed them all I'm going to throw the thud out of that because the thud was so good at what it did and such a legend, which we have one here, but it's not, it's not on site right now. But, um, you know, the Air Force swallowed its pride for the first time in history, bought a Navy fighter, and the rest is history. And, you know, the airplane was the backbone of our tactical forces for, you know, a, a quarter of a century. And airplanes are only 100-some years old. So when you think about that, 
you know, the Israelis used it to great effect uh, in Yom Kippur, the war of attrition, and, and I could go for days. There's still four or five nations flying it, and the airplane first flew May 27th, 1958, so count the years. She's almost 60, and she's still flying as a drone in the Air Force, so they go up and check, you know, check, test the new missiles on, on this airplane because it's still viable and still in a tremendous aircraft, so that, there's your F-4 basically in a nutshell. In just a few minutes, uh, we're going to start at 10.30 with the ceremony. The airplane is going to be here in, at about 11 o'clock, so if everybody can start moving over this way, I need to try to have as many people as possible on this side of the line, and uh, we'll move over to these chairs after, uh, we get, after the airplane gets here. So uh, if everybody can start moving this way, we'll get started here in just a second. Well, good morning. Good morning, sir. Hope everybody's doing really good this morning. My name's Jeff Walford. I'm the director of the Hickory Aviation Museum. I'd like to welcome everybody here today. I'd like to welcome Mayor Wright, members of the Hickory City Council, Brigadier General Huggins, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I really do appreciate y'all coming out here this morning. Uh, this is a big event not only for Hickory but for our museum. And uh, in a few minutes, we're going to have a Grumman EA-6B Prowler is going to fly in here. The airplane is with VMAQT-1, the Banshees, based in Cherry Point, North Carolina. And it's going to be arriving here shortly. It's going to become a permanent part of the Hickory Aviation Museum. In case you didn't get a program, I want to go over real quickly what we're going to do this morning. You're going to start out having to listen to me. And then uh, Kyle Kirby is going to do our invocation. And then we've got a flag presentation by the South Caldwell Navy JROTC. We have Eric Setzer here to sing the national anthem. And then... Uh, Due to this auspicious occasion, having the Marines here, we're going to do the Marine Corps hymn. And at 11 o'clock, the airplane is going to be here. After that, we're going to have Mayor Wright uh, say a few words, and he's going to present uh, the keys of the city to the flight crew and several very important people that are here. Uh, we're going to have one of the air crew is going to make a few remarks, and then we're going to get finished up. Before we get started, I want to recognize a few people that have supported Hickory Aviation Museum. First off, I'd like to recognize Mayor Wright. Uh, Mayor Wright and the members of the City Council and the City of Hickory, and especially Terry Clark, our airport manager, had just really gone out of their way to always support us, and we really appreciate it. Another very important person I want to thank is Frank Drendel. Uh, Frank has always supported this museum. Most of the airplanes that are here wouldn't be here if it hadn't been for Frank's support, so thank you very much. Randy Monroe has probably been one of our biggest supporters. Randy Monroe owns Ram Metals. He is Ram Metals. And this guy has become one of our greatest assets. I mean, he, uh, he goes to bat for us and uh, more times than I can count. And I also have a sp I'd like to offer a special thanks to Dave Peel of the Naval Surface Warfare Center, Tony Pudoff with the A6B Fleet Readiness Center, and Patrick Fitzgerald from NAS Pax River. If it wasn't for them, we would have never gotten this airplane. And even though he wasn't able to attend, I want to thank Mr. Anthony Mazzone with the U.S. Navy for believing in us. He absolutely went to bat for us, and uh, he stuck his neck out pretty far for us to get this airplane. Also at this time, I'd like to recognize all the veterans that are in the crowd today. All of you, a lot, a lot of you are already standing, but uh, for all the veterans that are here, would you please raise your hand? We're really fortunate we've got a few World War II veterans here, and I want to recognize them personally. One of them is my good friend Bob Morgan sitting here on the front row. And Bob's been an integral part of this museum for a long time. He flew with ATC in World War II, and he's just a great guy. Uh, we've also got Hal Muth here. I don't see... Yeah, Hal's over there. Uh, Hal flew in three wars. He started out as a flying sergeant in the Marine Corps in World War II, flew jets during Korea, and then flew helicopters in Vietnam. And he's just, uh, he's a great guy. So please, a round of applause. I would also like to ask all the plank owners from Hickory Aviation Museum to stand. And if you are standing, raise your hand. These are the people that put in all the effort to get this museum open in 2007. 
Right, now obviously, it's pretty easy to see who's with VMAQT1. They're all standing over here. But please, these guys are the ones that are out on the pointy end of the spear. The other thing I'd like to do is uh, I'd like to recognize anybody, Navy or Marine Corps, that flew, that flew uh, EA-6B Bureau number 163033. If you'd raise your hand. If you were a crew member, flew it, or had anything to do with it. But anyway, I want to thank all of everybody that's here today. It really means a lot to us. This is a big day for us, and we really do appreciate you coming out here. We did order the weather, so uh, I don't think it could be, get much better than this. Well, before we go on, I, there may be a few in the crowd that really don't know what an EA-6B is. And so, you know, since we're a museum, I thought I'd explain a little bit about this. Well, first off, we've got to talk about what electronic warfare is. Back in World War II, radar was developed. And guess what? The bad guys also got it. So it became obvious pretty early on that we had to find a way to counter their radar. And so the electronic warfare mission was created. So we, we built equipment and stuck it in airplanes and used it to jam radar. As technology continued to improve, people came out with radar-guided missiles. And so we had to come up with a way to defeat that. And so airplanes were equipped with more and more technology that would allow us to try to combat this threat. And so aircraft were modified to carry jamming equipment and to have any any missile technology. The electronic warfare mission, you know, expanded to counter all these weapons. And today, even one of the biggest threats we have are IEDs that the enemy plants that are used, that are detonated with cell phones. And this EA-6B even has a capability of jamming that. And so, beginning with modified bombers in World War II to the state of the art that we have in this EA-6B. Uh, these guys are the guys that lead the way into combat. They blaze a trail for everybody else to follow. And, uh, you know, the CA-6B and its electronic warfare mission has become an integral part of any strike package. You know, during the Vietnam War, this threat got, got to be more and more of a problem. And the Korean War era aircraft that were being used for electronic warfare mission just weren't sufficient. They were also looking at ways to replace the aging uh, KA-3 uh, Sky Warrior. And so the Navy and Marine Corps went to Grumman to try to come up with a solution. So the first thing they did was they modified an A6 intruder and put the electronic warfare equipment on it. And one thing they discovered very quickly was it was just too much for one guy to do, and so they went back to the drawing board. So Grumman went back, they stretched the fuselage, and came up with a three crew member airplane. You have one pilot and three electronic warfare officers. And so this modification became the EA-6B Prowler. The airplane first flew in 1968, and then it was introduced into the fleet in 1971. And throughout the years, this aircraft has been modified several times to counter advanced electronic threats as they were developed. The A6B is also capable of gathering electronic signals intelligence to help us defeat this increasing enemy technology. The Prowler also is capable of attacking surface targets on its own, and particularly radar sites and surface tail missile launchers with uh, any radar or harm missiles. Since its entry into the fleet, the Navy and Marine Corps EA-6Bs have protected our aircraft from any radar detection and guided missiles, and like I said, they've led the way to combat. They opened up the pass of least resistance for other aircraft to follow. And another thing I wanted to point out about the Prowler is that out of 170 of them that were built, none have ever been lost in combat. Well, after 45 years of service, the Prowler is being phased out. The Navy retired the A-6B from the fleet in 2013, and the Marine Corps is in the process to begin to phase it out and the last of the airplanes will be phased out in 2019. The Prowler is one of the oldest airplanes in the fleet. The last one was actually built in 1991, and even with its age, the aircraft is still very relevant today. It's being replaced by the uh, modified by the EF, EFA-18 Growler. All right, so that's about the airplane. Well, as you guys know, our museum's about the people. And so let's talk a little bit about VMAQT-1 Banshees. Marine Tactical Electronic Warfare Squadron 1 is, an elect is a U.S. Marine Corps Electronic Warfare Training Squadron operating in the Grumman EA-6B Prowler. The squadron is based at MCS Cherry Point and falls under the command of Marine Air Group 14 and the 2nd Marine Aircraft Wing. The VMAQT-1 logo is the Banshee, an Irish mythological fi figure that foretells death. Their motto, let's see if I can get this right, is Tangrat Bas, which is Gaelic for death foretold. 
VMAQT-1's mission is to conduct airborne electronic warfare in support of the fleet marine forces and other units as the Joint Force Commander directs. This includes suppressing enemy radar and surface air missiles using jamming and harm missiles as well and conducting tactical electronic intelligence in its passive support role. VMAQT-1 can trace its history back to 1952. And I will stop for just a second. Before you leave today, please come down here and look at this board. This traces the history of the squadron and shows all the awards they've had and it's something you want to take a look at. But like I said, they can trace their history back to 1952 when the squadron was activated at Pohang, South Korea as Marine Composite Squadron 1, VMC-1. Their mission was to provide electronic countermeasures in support of UN aircraft during the Korean War. In 1958, the squadron was redesignated as Marine Composite Recon Reconnaissance Squadron 1, or VMC-J-1, and flew combat missions throughout the Vietnam War from 1965 through 1970. The squadron was deactivated in 1975 and then reactivated in 1977 as Marine Tactical Electronic Warfare Squadron 2, Detachment X-Ray. In 1992, Detachment Dead X-Ray was redesignated VMAQ-1, and since that time, VMAQ-1 has participated in many combat operations, ranging from operations to support of conflicts in Bosnia and Desert Storm, to Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan. In 2013, VMAQ-1 was redesignated as VMAQ-T-1, and became responsible for training pilots and naval flight officers to become, to become fleet qualified in the A6B Prowler. VMAQT-1 is due to be deactivated this month. The Hickory Aviation Museum is very happy indeed to be receiving Bureau number 163033 from VMAQT-1 and as you'll see in a few minutes the squadron just recently put on a special paint job just for this. Please join me as we give a round of applause for the members of VMAQT-1 and the Marine Corps. At, the, at this time at this time, I'd like to introduce Kyle Kirby. My brother's here. Oh, is he here? Okay. I'd like to introduce Kevin Kirby. He's going to do our invocation. So, Kevin. Whoops. Good morning. Uh, what a wonderful turnout. Let's, um, let's go to the Lord and ask His blessings on this day, shall we? Father, we just come before you today. We thank you for the honor and the privilege of being in this beautiful place on this beautiful day that you've given us. Lord, I thank you for this organization, uh, for the Saber Society, for the Hickory Aviation Museum and their mission, Father, to, uh, to honor and remember uh, the members of our armed forces, specifically those that have served in, in the aviation wing of those. And Father, we come today, we await the arrival of this aircraft. We pray for the safe arrival of uh, not, the, not just the plane, but the pilots as well, Father. And Lord, as we... Uh, we're, we come together today, it's, it's not to glorify a machine, but it's to remember the service. Remember, Father, your grace that you've shed on this nation throughout generations and the fact that you've raised up people who will sacrifice to serve this great nation and keep this great nation, uh, the, the nation that it is, Father, the freedom that we have. It comes with a price, and it's a price that none of us can afford. And we just thank you and praise you for that. And we thank you and praise you most of all for the one that paid the ultimate price for our eternal salvation, the price that we cannot afford. We, we thank you for our Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord, and we just pray that you would bless this time together today. Let it be a time of celebration, a time to renew old friendships and to forge new friendships, Father, and Lord, to celebrate again your blessings on this nation, the people that have served it, and Father, to, uh, to unashamedly say, God bless America. And we just pray this in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Woo! Please stand as the South Caldwell Navy JROTC Color Guard presents the flag and, our, and, for our, our na and uh, then we'll have our national anthem. Can you see by the dawn's early light 
What so proudly we hailed At the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the All right, we have a couple of minutes here before the airplane gets here. And uh, so he's going to be hopefully here in about five minutes.
you know that. <laughs>
force on the east coast outside of the Pentagon. Don't take on Hickory. And this is a very important front porch to the city of Hickory. This airport, the tower, the museum, the uh, offices across the way, and we are so proud of this and what Jeff and his, his folks and what Terry Clark and his folks have done to make this a welcoming, outstanding airport that is highly rated by the users. With that, I'm just going to wait until we have the folks up here to present them the key to the city to symbolize the importance we place on our military, on our museum, and on our airport. And I'm doing that on behalf of Hickory City Council. That includes Mr. Hank Guess, who is here, council member from Ward 4. Any other council members here? I didn't see any. But we are... Uh, Phil Yacht's here. He's an Air Force lady. And Phil Yacht, longtime council member, whose name is on the airport right over there, the Philip C. Yacht Terminal. Let's hear it for Phil. You, you smell a lot of champagne up here. <laughs> we got four more coming. Uh, they're behind. They're all, oh, they're all, of, behind. all everybody here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's my pleasure to present the key to the city to each of these outstanding people, both for their own achievements and in their own right and as members of the United States Marine Corps, all of the Marines, right? <laughs> I, I just, one sailor. One sailor. One sailor, I hear. One sailor. And, and I always tell a little story when I give the key because there's an interesting part of Hickory history that ties into North Carolina history. Our motto is 
Vestigia nulla retrorsa. And that's Latin. It means re-elect the mayor. <laughs> Actually, our motto ties in nicely with a piece of North Carolina history that is, that is part of our lore. At the Battle of Kings Mountain, which was a decisive factor in Cornwallis surrendering, a ragtag bunch of regiments from North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia held off Cornwallis's well-fed, highly trained, and brilliantly uniformed redcoats. And it scared him to death. He said, these guys can beat us. The North Carolina, I mean, the South Carolina and Virginia boys said, those North Carolina boys fight like they have tar on their heels. They won't back up. And I'm told that that was the first Marine regiment in this country. I'm, I'm also told by the Navy guys that even then they were part of the Navy. <laughs> hey, thank you all guys. There you go. Sir, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Appreciate thank it. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. By the way, these guys know how to make an entrance, don't they? <laughs> it's the uh, lynch jeans. i got to lower this a little bit. Um, the ragtag bunch of uh, Marines, uh, we can definitely relate to those uh, those guys. Uh, I would say that we're fed a little bit better now. Um, first off, uh, thank God for this. Uh, I was able to come in here, and uh, that's uh, eight years of flying this thing. Uh, well over 2,000 hours, couple deployments into to combat, and uh, he got me back safe every time. Uh, Secondly, you're always supposed to thank your wife. So before I forget, uh, my wife who's standing over to the, uh, uh, she's right there. Uh, she's getting it on video so she can write it on the calendar. But I, I would not have been able to get to this point in my career without her and my family. And they have absolutely supported me every uh, step of the way. And uh, she definitely took great care of the family while I was away. And uh, even to this day, she still does a great job. So thank you very much, sweetie. I appreciate it. Next uh, is all these uh, fine Marines and then uh, the uh, hundreds, if not thousands, that I've served with uh, that make this aircraft possible to get it in the air every time. There is absolutely no way this thing flies without them. Uh, and uh, we have the best maintenance squadron uh, in the fleet. And I, I would not be here uh, without those guys. Uh, make sure this aircraft is ready to fly every single day uh, that I've gone out there to do it. So, gentlemen. Thank you very much. And last uh, but not least, uh, the great people of Hickory and uh, everyone associated with this museum. There's not very many people that get a, uh, a welcome like that uh, as we come into a town or uh, in my case, my last flight. I could not have asked for anything more. I greatly appreciate all the hospitality. They have been absolutely outstanding all the way through this process and made it very, very, very easy. So uh, to the everybody of Hickory and especially the people in the museum, thank you very much. <laughs> to these fine young gentlemen uh, for allowing me uh, to do this today, I greatly appreciate it. It's John's last flight today. Uh, he's done just as much as I have. So uh, it was great to share it with these gentlemen. Thank you very much. I greatly appreciate the hospitality. Thank you. It is a great place to retire. <laughs> <laughs> it is. You've already sold me. <laughs> and this guy, the beans and green. <laughs> uh, we got a great marine corps lady. Well, I tell you what, I really appreciate everybody coming out here today. It means an awful lot. I, I'm so thankful for you guys. I mean, it really just. Thank you. Uh, we're going to take care of this airplane. 
And we're going to do your squadron. We're going to we're going to keep your memory alive at all this. So uh, I, I guarantee you that you can come back anytime, and and we'll be taking care of her. I really do appreciate everybody coming out today. Uh, the airplane is going to be here available for you to look at for another hour or so. We've got to take it over to the south side of the field and begin the process of demilitarizing it. Uh, please take time to go look at the airplane, talk to the guys. Uh, like I said, this is a once in a lifetime kind of thing. Uh, while you're here, I got to put a plug into the museum. Please go through the museum. And also, they're, they're making hamburgers over there. We've got a great little restaurant here. Make sure you take advantage of that. Uh, we've got some things at the museum. We've got t-shirts and some posters that we got available to sell. And, and once again, I'd really like to thank the men and women of VMAQT-1 for their service. And I do want them to know that the museum is going to take care of their airplane. And I'll, they always will have an open invitation anytime you guys want to come back to come check on her and to come visit with us. And I can assure you that, uh, especially since the mayor gave you the keys, you always be welcome here in the city of Hickory. Thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate it. Have a great day.
Hello, I'm Bill Tate with Caldwell County Now and Then on Facebook, where I have restored thousands of photos of Lenore and Caldwell County, some of them going back into the 1890s. There are some videos on there as well. I'm also on the board of directors of our Caldwell Heritage Museum, and if you appreciate what we do, please consider donating and donating your time, become a volunteer. We would really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you.